and it comes out with the master's brush. Chinese people can be very still and quiet for a long time, but they remember. They have long memories. I mean, even as a student back in the 1940s, Pei was thinking, I'm going to give you a new, authentic Chinese architecture, the first you've had since the Ming. And now, at the end of his long career, the Suzhou Museum is, in many ways, a very graceful and lyrical essay in his idea. And it's really the culmination of this dream which he had at Harvard. The building is very elegant, subtle, but to actually have one of his last pieces return back to where he is from, I think that journey as a career is grand, is noble, and it's very Chinese. I mean, always return home when you are successful. Only come home when you're doing better than your ancestors. I don't know if I am is very conscious about it, but that act of coming home with actually doing the most important building is one of the Chinese virtues. I left China in 1935, so I returned to Suzhou almost as an outsider, looking back at a place that I remember. But I, was I prepared to deal with it? I don't know whether I did, but I tried to. A little I remember of China, I tried to put it back into this building. So I like to think that this is a, a Suzhou place that I've created. Suzhou Museum was an exciting journey for me. And it was a challenging one, but I faced that challenge with a great deal of interest. Looking back at it, I think it is uh, my return to home, so to speak. <laughs>